Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we are building a TKL. This is the BM80 from KP Republic. Uh, they were kind enough to send it out to me to do a build um, and show you guys what we've got here. It's a very basic TKL. It has aluminum plate with a sandwich mount. Um, you've got a little bit of flex, not as much as a gas mount, but definitely something you could feel over a tray mount and this is a qmk via keyboard as are their other bm series i've reviewed practically all of the bm series i believe um i think the only one that i haven't reviewed is the bm60 enc it's a 60 percent with an encoder and i believe that it can be 61 or 64 depending but today we are building the tkl version of their bm series the bm80 and it is a pretty basic kit. It comes with clip-in uh, PCB stabilizers as opposed to a clip plate stabilizers. A very solid aluminum plate and a top and bottom case that's made out of ABS. I'm going to go ahead and mod it as I build it um, to see what kind of sound we can get. I mean, stock, I think we get a very bass sound, but because this is a kit, it makes sense to just go ahead and modify it because it's all taken apart anyway, so it's gonna be much easier to do now. I'm gonna do a few things to it that I think will make it sound pretty decent. Um, for the cost of this board and the fact that you actually have access to its source control for the firmware, I think it is, or at least has been my experience with other BM boards, um, that they are a good starting board for not only learning how to use QMK via, but also how to mod what are on the surface basic kits, but just because they're basic and may not sound or perform the best stock, I think that they're a good base to build upon and actually make a decent keyboard out of. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna go ahead and build it. So that's what we're gonna do today. Uh, as I'm building it, I'm going to go ahead and apply some of the standard mods that I think will help this keyboard sound and even maybe feel a lot better than it would be stock. So let's go ahead and get started. So for the build, um, I went ahead and decided that I was going to put some kill mat down below in the, uh, the case. But before I got to the case wanted to take care of the PCB first. Now the PCB, I went ahead and cut out a piece of LDPE plastic. This is plastic that you can get from uh, big box stores. It's meant for protecting the floor furniture when you're painting. Um, it's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's one mil thick, one or two mil thick, and a whole roll of it was like eight bucks at Home Depot. Um, I cut a piece of that out. Then I also used some uh, PE foam from a previous uh, keyboard, not sure which one. I just cut it into one sheet, cut those pieces to exactly the same dimensions. I put them over the plate. Then I went ahead and punched out the holes that I needed to so that I could stick in the screw and stabilizers. After the stabilizers were all in place, I went ahead and did the two layer Tempest tape mod. Uh, in this case, I'm just using a thicker two inch masking tape. So I went horizontal and then vertically and then making sure to punch out the holes, not only for where the, it's not really a stud, it's kind of where the screw holes go in and three spots on the top of the PCB. But prior to doing the Tempest tape mod, I went ahead and used one of my spudgers to punch out all the center post holes for the switches. Um, this is a thinner plastic, so most of the time the switches will uh, go right through it, but sometimes it stretches it and it kind of leaves it in a place where it could kind of push out after time. So I prefer punching the holes out first. That way um, you're not dealing with any issues as far as the switches going into the plate. For the case, I went ahead and cut out some pieces of kill mat, uh, Noiseco, Noico. It's basically car automotive dampening foam. It's a very hair, very heavy, uh, butyl uh, rubber and it does have a um, a shiny side or a foil side to it but that ends up giving this 
a lot of heft and weight. A QMK VIA, and I will be sharing the links down below to the QMK source as well as to the VIA uh, JSON file as it's not in the directory, but I was able to find the source control. Any of the BM series are QMK. They're not the fake VIA, they're actual QMK. So you have your layers and um, it's a it's a pretty, for the price, I think it's a good kit. Plus, I think that this is a good base for those that are just getting into the hobby that haven't been in it for a while, haven't had the experience of buying, you know, a cheaper kit and going through the process of modifying it to make it sound as good and feel as good as possible. With the O-rings that I put in there, I actually do have the tiniest amount of flex. So it is not as bad as, say, a standard tray mount. It's closer to a sandwich mount with just that tiny amount of flex. But it's at least it does not feel like typing on concrete as there's actually a little bit of give. So it makes it for a much more pleasant experience. I was going to make a foam layer for between the plate and the PCB, but I could not find my, um, a new, I have a pack. For new exacto knives basically i stick the uh, plate on top of some uh, neoprene foam and just cut out where the holes need to be so that i can actually put a layer between the plate and the pcb i think that might have taken us to a little bit of a deeper tone but this one is actually a clacky build and a clacky that i kind of like um with the uh, cherry uh, keycaps as we can see we don't have any issue with interference on the second third row I'm um, going to guess because of uh, the newer molding for the Otemu switches and plus the fact that it is a long pull stem. So overall, I'm quite satisfied. It didn't take that long to uh, to do the mods. I quite enjoy building keyboards. Uh, now, a lot of times I'll just build it out stock and then mod it. But I knew this one would probably be a little bit hollow and a little bit lackluster. I didn't want to have to just put it together just so that I knew I was going to take it apart and mod it. So I went ahead and just did the mod right off the bat. Um, I am and continue to remain a big fan of TKL layouts because it's uh, basically a shorter version of a full size, but still has everything I need besides a numpad. So I do hope that you guys enjoyed this quick modification slash build of the KP Republic BM80 V2. Um, it's, it's a fun little keyboard and I'm actually going to use it for a while. It's, um, I've been aiming more towards docky sound profiles lately, but adding the P the LDPE or PET and the, uh, PE foam really does give it a nice pop that actually almost turns up the volume on the switch. I mean, it is a long pull, so we're going to have, you know, that sharp bottom out, but that sharpness just um, communicates into a nice clacky sound. I think the aluminum plate probably hate, uh, helps with that as far as uh, that and also the fact that it doesn't have any uh, sort of dampening between the plate and the PCB. So at another time, I will probably come back to that, add that, and maybe try out some different switches. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and leave you guys with a sound test of my modded BM80. If you guys have any questions, any suggestions for uh, the next time that I come to this keyboard, what you'd like to see me do to it, please leave them down in the comment section below. I do my best to respond to all queries and any suggestions, I add them to my list so that I have them in front of me when I come back to that keyboard. Um, but for right now, I want to wish you guys an awesome day. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.